Hey, what's going on? I hope you're doing great. I'm having a moment, a cathartic moment that I want to share with you. And it's about something that I've been dealing with for a long time. And I've been reflecting on for a very long time, 10 years or more. And I think it's something, a, an understanding, a deep spiritual understanding that can improve the life of any creator, any artist, any entrepreneur out there. I'm just going to try my best to keep it short and summarize the both the feeling and the wisdom behind a long talk that I just had with Florencia, my wife. She's a colorist and we were talking about her colorist career and my career as a filmmaker. So here it goes. Um, okay, I'm going to start with a quote by Marianne, Marianne Williamson. Um, let me see if I can find it. Okay, Marianne Williamson said that our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, she says, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing and enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I'll just repeat that one last line, very powerful. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other, other people permission to do the same. Because I think at some point in our lives, we question the validity of other people's opinions over our life. And it's generally a big, a very common piece of wisdom that people like to share that you shouldn't just you shouldn't give a fuck about other people's opinions but social recognition is not the same as other people's opinions actually fuck other people's opinions but we shouldn't put an invisible cloak over ourselves thinking i don't want anyone to cast judgment on my value because we were meant to shine and shine and light is meant to spread not to be covered but we tend as creator we tend uh, as creators we tend to cover our shine and that's a big problem because it has to do with a social a, a social behavior or situation where we're kind of like afraid of what other people are going to say about ourselves, about our work, about our career, about our choices. And it's both. Matilda, you just, why, why are you doing this with the microphone? I've also been thinking about this issue on an economic level, talking about the kind of like the capitalism versus socialism dilemma and how a lot of young people tend to favor socialism because of some kind of inner resentment towards excellence. Because excellence is very hard to achieve and it usually brings big success in life and material wealth as well. But it's a contrast thing and people don't like to be contrasted towards something that makes them feel smaller. It's an ego thing, but I think that overcoming this ego trap c can be a before and after in a lot of creators' careers because we don't usually feel excited to wake up and do everything in our power to move forward with our adventure. And it sometimes happens because we don't feel that it is right, that it is moral, that it is correct to become our best self, to pursue excellence, to differentiate our, ourselves from the average, the mediocre, because we become lonely and people might um, think of us differently as not belonging anymore, not being part of their group, their family, their club, because excellence is lonely, but mediocreness is a big, beautiful, happy party. And everyone wants to be in a happy party, right? But if you want to be unique in your pursuit of excellence, you're going to have to maybe find one or two friends that are also in that pursuit. And, and that's probably enough to not feel lonely. Just find a couple of people that are also trying to feel excited every day about a big adventure that they created from the, for themselves. And we'll get over the feeling lonely because we're not part of the average anymore and it is a very subconscious thing which is hard to make conscious and and just pretend like we've got it right because 
it is since it is subconscious we have to deal with it it's a dance that we have to that we have to go through every day in how we feel with ourselves how we're talking to ourselves our inner dialogue is setting the tone for how the external reality will position itself because everything starts with our thoughts and how we speak to ourselves the language that we choose to program ourselves with every time we think every time we engage in that inner dialogue we're choosing words that are programming the way we're going to behave and then the way we behave every day becomes our everyday life throughout the years and that becomes our destiny so every every thought that we have is setting up malleable reality so that that becomes our destiny over time so we're choosing our destiny when we're choosing the words we use to 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 talk to ourselves and talk to others with so we need to make a very conscious choice about not lying to ourselves that we don't want social recognition as artists that we don't care about the both the recognitions of our colleagues and the market as a filmmaker I've always kind of have this fake this is hard for me to admit but it's it's a fake moral superiority that I have to that I have to heal where I've I was telling myself I don't really care about festival prestige I don't care about a group of filmmakers getting together and choosing to give me a prize I care about the market I care about the consumer the the soul that is going through the experience in the cinema that is potentially watching my movie and having an alchemical spiritual life experience with it but honestly if i'm really really honest with myself i've been lying to myself about not wanting the oscar or the palm d'or or 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 winning in guanajuato film festival you know like all artists want their work to have a life of its own and to reach as most as much people as possible and like like why would i try to avoid festival recognition just because i'm choosing to think that i have a higher ground on moral superiority because i don't need that recognition so i'm better than people that are working every day to to have some festival uh price that is going to advance their career because i used to think all i really want to do is get to the point where i can create that one movie that can change people's life and i don't care if i'm 30 or 40 or 50 as long as i get to that one thing that gets to people's hearts i don't need 10 films in my pocket and have a long career as a film director and pursue all of these things that are in my previous train of thought more ego based right but we can't get rid of ego so ego has to shine we can't be living trying to have a small ego that is i think that is a, a lie we should have a malleable ego so that we're not experiencing the side effects of a rigid ego which has to deal with unnecessary stress emotional blockages etc so it's it is it is a very intelligent thing to have a useful tool and ego is a tool to experience life and to find fulfillment of our soul and go through our soul journey because we are soul first but e we, but we can't get rid of ego in this reality so since we are dealing with ego we should use it as maximalists not as minimalists we shouldn't be ego minimalists we should we should have a, a strong and mature ego that is serving us that we are in control of that is malleable and flexible but that is not as Marianne Williamson says that is not shrinking there's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you and and we do this with ego because we think this is a morally better ground like a more spiritual mindset or a more spiritual behavior to think that oh my ego is under control and i don't care about what other people think and i've got that covered i don't really have a big ego i don't want people to see me i don't want i don't need the standing ovation i don't need the spotlight but maybe others do 
maybe we need to shine in order to subconsciously give permission to others to also do the same because, and this is also what happens in what I was re referring to about the capitalism versus socialism or better, well, better said with better categories, freedom versus statism. Because some people don't want to be engaged in that meritocracy. They don't want that contrast and that comparison to others about value. They don't want to be judged by character. That's why they, they're playing identity politics and they're playing um, s social construct games and they're basing their identity in an ideology and that's costing them real suffering in their lives. But also it's preventing them from experiencing their true journey they're here to experience. And as creators, we were we we have that innate creativity within us, every one of us, not some of us. But some of us really choose to connect with that and and shine through it. And I think that's what makes a difference. I think that's what really brings meaning to our lives. Not only believing that in our room we are great artists, but also having the social feedback that people are moved by our creations. Just as we are moved by God's creation when we can maybe have tears in our eyes when we watch a beautiful sunset because some, somehow it gets us emotional because we are made in that image of God or the creator, the the one and only, if you know what I mean. So whatever word you, you use to refer to that source, you are also that. And so every day that you don't wake up and be that, you are you're causing a disservice to yourself and others. And to be is to be seen as well as to only be with yourself. Just being is not why, why we are here. We are also here to be seen and be through others. So I'll just leave it here and I'll do my best to leave 2024 without, without that filter in me and just share my light my intelligence, share my ideas, don't own my ideas. They're here, they come and go, but if they feel meaningful, I'll share them and try to engage with others on, on real deep uh, conversation. So I hope this helps. I know sometimes it sounds like on a language, on a conceptual level, it is not really that complex of an issue, but the complex thing the thing that's not really easy is to behave in a way that really shows that you've understood the lesson because there's different levels to the understanding of this information. You have to process it on a conscious level, but you also have to program yourself so that it becomes unconscious. And in order to reprogram yourself, you first have to learn how to take out the trash, how to filter the unuseful programming that we didn't choose, but it's there so that we can choose the programming that we actually want for ourselves and the ideas and the principles, the values that we really want. They first are conscious because we can talk about them, but we can be, get them to a deeper level of understanding where they're visible in our behavior. As Jordan Peterson says, and this is the core of a lot of his work, he says, what what we talk about, what we believe is not actually what we believe. What we actually believe is what manifests in our behavior. That tells a more truthful story about our beliefs than what we say we actually believe. And that's, I think, really powerful. It can sound very simple, but to understanding in a deeper level, make it subconscious, make it, make it act out naturally, organically, that's a really different level of, of the game. So I hope this helps. I'll see you soon.